Hi everybody, welcome to this uh, revision webcast on one of these key topics in Unit 1 Micro, the, the production possibility frontier. Thanks for joining me. I'll aim in the next 10-15 minutes to take you through this topic and look at the key diagrams and the essential exam points that uh, the examiners want you to include when you're using the PPF as part of your part of your analysis. And hopefully this session will be useful for you. So in terms of how we can apply the PPF concept, essentially this question appears many times in multiple choice papers for different boards. Always guaranteed almost to get a question on the PPF. You might also be able to bring it into play when you're analyzing some topical uh, issues. Uh, for example, you might want to look at it in terms of the impact of specialization within industries, the effects of trade. And crucially, when we get to the macro paper, obviously you might be using the PPF to show economic growth. Quite a few topical issues that examiners are often fond of using when asking you to think about PPF concepts. Uh, just recently, of course, with the earthquake in Nepal, we think about the, the, the damaging effects of severe, significant, widespread natural disasters. Longer term environmental issues, such as the collapse of fish stocks and deforestation. A very topical issue at the moment. Some people think this is going to be a unit one question. The, the, the whole economics surrounding shale oil, shale gas, the fracking revolution, both in the UK and, of course, significantly in the United States. So to what extent might investment in fracking be uh, a PPF star question? And even to the, the, the wider issues about the labor market, the, the effects on a country's production possibilities from either net inward or net outward migration of labor. So the PPF is a theoretical concept, but I think it does have quite a, a strong applied uh, resonance if you know your stuff really well. A good example of PPF issue in the news. So this is taking uh, from 2004. Quite a few companies announcing they plan to make uh, quite significant investments in exploration licenses for, for shale, oil, and gas. Uh, more recently, the Prime Minister, newly elected Prime Minister Cameron, has said that uh, although the coalition is in the Conservative government now is in favour of uh, big investment in renewable energy. They've ruled out uh, a big dash for fracking, uh, I think partly on political grounds. But keep in mind that these are really topical issues, and, and reading the newspapers on a regular basis should still form part of the revision. So let's look at the basics of the PPF, and let's take you through the, the key, key points. It's always good to define terms well, precisely, accurately. The PPF shows the, the output combinations of two goods or services that are feasible or attainable when all factor resources are fully and efficiently employed. That is a strong definition. And uh, what the examiners want is students who really know their definitions very precisely. They don't dance around the definition, they, they, nail, they nail it really quickly. Most PPFs are drawn as concave to the origin. That's partly because of the law of diminishing returns, that the resources that are used in producing Good X, for example, may not necessarily be as productive or suitable when you're producing good Y. That links to the idea of the opportunity cost changing as we move away from good X towards good Y. A classic uh, analysis of the PPF uh, concerns points that lie within the boundary, points that lie along it, and points that lie beyond it. So D and E in this diagram are inside the PPF. And that signifies either unemployment of resources or an underutilization of those factor inputs, or that the inputs are being used fully, but they're not being used productively. In that sense, if we're within the PPF, we, 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 are, we are struggling to uh, achieve efficiency. Point F lies beyond the PPF, and that's not yet attainable. We'd have to shift the PPF out in some way to get there. Whereas A, B, and C are all points along the PPF, and they are economically efficient outputs. And this is a, an important idea, the idea of efficiency. So if, we, if we're inside the PPF, then we are using our factor resources inefficiently, and we, there could be a gain in welfare for moving towards the PPF. Um, those are sort of welfare and efficiency concepts can be a little bit hard to, to grasp, but essentially we're losing productive 
allocative efficiency if we're inside our, our PPF. Uh, a lot of exam questions ask you to explore the concept of opportunity cost in relation to the PPF. So in this example, we look at the output of wheat and cotton. And if we shift resources out of wheat, if we go down from 200 to 160, the, we can get a resulting gain in cotton production of 100, but that involves a sacrifice. So the extra 100 units of cotton involves sacrificing or foregoing 40 units of wheat. And therefore, one thinks about the, the marginal opportunity cost of every extra unit of cotton uh, being four tenths of a unit of wheat. If we move down the curve, assuming diminishing returns, assuming the PPF has that shape, then the opportunity cost goes up. So if we try to increase output of cotton to 480, which is shown by point C on the diagram, then we have to give up 80 more units of wheat. So the opportunity cost has gone from A to B is, is four tenths a unit of wheat for every extra unit of cotton. But if we try and increase output to 480, then the opportunity cost has gone up to one unit of wheat for every extra unit of cotton. So the examiners are really keen that you can use a PPF to show opportunity cost. In the exam, please do draw to the axes and make clear the explanation about how the opportunity cost is changing when we move along the curve. Sometimes uh, PPFs can be drawn as straight lines, that's fine. We're assuming here that the, the marginal opportunity cost is constant as we move, for example, from consumer goods to capital goods. Again, the gradient of the PPF tells you something about the opportunity cost. And uh, crucially, of course, we think about when a production possibility curve can shift, can it shift outwards. In this example, I've shifted the PPF from P, 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 PPF1 to PPF2, and that suggests that we can now increase our output of capital goods, although we can't increase our total output of consuming goods. So typically that might have been, for example, a, an innovation in manufacturing capital goods or an increase in the supply of resources available to that industry or perhaps better management. Either way, there is a, there's a, a gain in productive potential, productive capacity. So for example, we could keep our output of consumer goods at 60, but increase our output of capital goods from 25 to 42. That's an outward shift in the PPF. What are these? causes. I think it's quite important just to revise the fundamental causes, the reasons why the PPF might shift outwards. And on the left hand side, I've given you five possible causes, higher productivity, uh, better management, an increase in the stock of capital, innovation and invention, what have you. Uh, and just a brief comment, it's quite important in the exam to make the connections, to make the explanations. So if productivity goes up, the output per unit goes up, and therefore effectively the cost goes down and you can produce more. Uh, if you have um, um, discovery of extraction of new natural resources, then providing those resources are commercially viable, then the exploration will eventually lead to the extraction and, and the output results. So those are the sort of five key causes of shifts, outward shifts, in the PPF. However, it is the case that the production possibility curve can shift inwards. All the students think it can only move outwards. Of course, we know that the PPF can occasionally move inwards. Obvious example would be the, the damage, the, the chaos caused by appalling natural disasters, be it a, a lengthy drought, terrible tsunami, a, a sizable earthquake, and, and things like flooding. And uh, here's a good example from Nepal. Obviously, our thoughts are still very much with what's been happening in that, that part of the world. The 7.8 uh, magnitude earthquake last month, loss of life is horrendous. And in the middle paragraph there, you can see that the, the latest estimate is a $5 billion loss of economic output, which is actually equivalent to just a, about a quarter of Nepal's GDP. Very, very few people have insurance. And so the, the costs are absolutely enormous for this country. Uh, hundreds of thousands of homes and buildings and factories and infrastructure either severely damaged or destroyed. Here's a really topical example of how an earthquake can have devastating economic as well as, as, well as human and social costs. Another 
cause of an inward shift in the PPF would be civil war, resistant civil war. I think one thinks, for example, about uh, uh, the last four years in Syria and what that's done to the economy. Internal conflict, political instability, can cause very damaging economic consequences. You might also have, for example, out migration of labor. So in countries where unemployment is persistently high, oftentimes you'll see the younger workers leaving in search of work. One might think, for example, of Greece and Spain as examples there, um, and the loss of migrant workers trying to struggle, struggling to escape from, from North Africa. And if that's sufficiently large scale, that can have a significant effect on, on a country's productive potential. And that's the another cause of the PPF shifting in is if productivity goes down. Normally we'd expect efficiency to rise, but sometimes it can fall. For example, if you have a country where there's a significant depression of output, a loss of GDP, businesses often will invest a lot less. And in fact, the rate of investment may not be sufficient to replace the existing capital stock. Therefore, the consequence is that the capital stock actually diminishes. And if that happens, you would expect the, the nation's productive potential to, to fall. So this has been a 10 minute revision blast on the production possibility frontier. Hope you found it useful. It's really important to nail your concepts really well, to use good diagrams, but most important of all, I think, to think about how you can apply the production possibility frontier to the specific extracts from the questions that we've given in the exam. So I hope you found it useful and uh, do head over to our website. There are plenty more revision videos you can access on different subjects. And I uh, look forward to seeing you again sometime soon.